A couple of months ago, we journeyed over to the west coast of Sweden to pick up our dream campervan project. But just two short weeks after that, we were handed some news which turned our entire lives upside down. I got cancer diagnosis. This is what's been going on. Fair warning, we do talk openly about cancer in this video. Yeah, so in October 2022, uh, we bought this van, a half-finished project that we'd been waiting for, for a forever. Finally in October, we made the trip over to the West Coast to uh, go and pick it up. Yeah, we've been waiting so long for it. And we picked it up on a Saturday. And um, the week after I had a doctor's appointment, because I've been having stomach problems since about March, like everybody's been saying that it's not a problem. So we were like, all right, maybe I got an allergy or whatever. Got a doctor's appointment and uh, there it started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went 10 days from the first doctor's appointment until we got a diagnosis. And yeah. during them 10 days, it was doctor's appointments every single day. And so about two weeks after we bought this van, uh, I got cancer diagnosis. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the worst result that you could hope for. We were <laughs> thinking that it was some sort of allergy or, or something that was just not quite right. And um, in the end, they found uh, a tumour that was later discovered that it was uh, cancer. Yeah. And so the fun began. <laughs> Took everything off the fun of buying this van. Yeah. And it started being uh, hospital appointments. Well, basically every day. You have to be thankful that it went so fast, but it's also been such a roller coaster from being the happiest person in the world buying the van yeah. to 15 days later getting a cancer diagnosis and then starting everything that means we're having cancer. Yeah, I think one thing with you being so young and it being such an aggressive cancer diagnosis is that they wanted everything to go really fast. Yeah. So we did and it's been a whirlwind, doesn't it? Yeah. So you started with radiotherapy very quickly and straight after that was chemotherapy. Chemo. Yeah, and we got four rounds of chemo. So the next round starts tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah, round two. Yeah. Yeah, so you've, at the moment, you've crossed off radiation therapy. You've done all of that completely. Yeah. So that's checked off the list, and then one round of chemo. Yeah. And then in between that, we've uh, had COVID. Yeah. Which was loads of fun. Yeah. COVID and chemo is a great combination, isn't it? Yeah, not really. <laughs> and then it's not too long to the next scan, I think, where we're going to see if all of this is working or not. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully it's uh, it's reacted as well as we think. A lot of your symptoms have gotten a lot better, haven't yeah. they? So hopefully we're on the right track at least. It certainly feels that way. It's a long road ahead still, isn't it? Um, yeah, we're going to do chemo up until April time. And then after that is surgery. But we don't know when and it all depends on how well uh, my body's responding to this treatment, I think, as well. Yeah. So it's just one one step at a time so I'm trying not to think about the surgery yet because it's too too far ahead in the future I think to actually wrap your head around it. First round of chemo I was basically bed bound for about a week. Yeah. I felt terrible but they've given me some new meds that I'm going to take before this round and they're hoping that I'm going to feel better mm. uh, or at least it's not going to be a full week of feeling this <laughs> crap. But hopefully at the end of this IV session you won't have Covid to deal with. No. So uh, you never know, this uh, this one might feel a little bit better than last time. Yeah, hopefully. We crossed off all this shit now. Like, at some point you have to be at the bottom. So I mean, you can't get any worse. Yeah. <laughs> like we thought that earlier as well, I guess. I was going to say, I don't like, know how many times we thought that. Yeah. You can't go down from here. But, but at some point you actually have to hit the bottom and you can only crawl back up. Yeah, I think one of the main things for us is trying to stay positive throughout everything, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to look on the bright side and, um, I mean, there is no bright side with cancer, but the silver linings, I guess. Well, the bright side is that I don't got any me metastasis. Meta how do you say in English? Metastasis. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's not spread. Yeah, exactly. It's not spread. It's in one part of my intestines which is positive because it's easier to fight against. Mm -hmm. That's about it. That's the positive bit. Yeah. The hard thing with the whole everything is obviously that we got two really small kids as well. And um, they don't understand 
that you get tired. <laughs> no. <laughs> or that you feel rubbish. Yeah. I think that's the hardest thing, isn't it? Having the kids go through it with us. It's tough. It's yeah. I think it makes it hard with the kids in a few different ways because there's no time for recovery when you've got a three-year-old who is running around like a crazy person. That's the thing, like, you don't get to rest when you've got two little kids at home and um, I don't want to rest. <laughs> That's the problem as well, like, I don't want to miss out, oh, six months of the kids' lives. I want to be there. So that's the really hard part of getting a balance of rest and being a part of your kid's life, I think. Yeah, it's hard to, to explain to them that mama's got to get a bit tired and a bit, a bit sick to get better. Yeah. You can't really explain that to a three-year-old. No. That's the hard thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I got this, um, it's called a pick line. Can you explain what it is? I can't do it's it in English. It's essentially a silicon line that goes in to your arm that they put in uh, at the beginning of the first chemo session. And it's a silicon line that goes all the way in here and across a chest and directly into a heart. It sits just above one of the heart ventricles. So when they're giving you the IV, it's, it goes directly in. Yeah, but obviously um, Charlie sees that and he thinks that it looks like an airplane. <laughs> So it's a super airplane that gives me medicine, obviously. Yeah. So every time he's like, oh, when, when can you remove it? And I say, oh, it's a long time. And he goes, oh, when you remove it, then you can run again. Like that is, uh, <laughs> that's his goal. That's his logic, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The goal picture is for me to be able to run again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his favorite game is to run fast. Yeah. <laughs> but you're getting there. Yeah. You're getting there. Yeah. It's a long road ahead, but it's uh, worth it in the end. Yeah, yeah, there's no... There's no option. No. It's just to fight. That's it. Just to keep going. Yeah. We just have to keep our fingers crossed that we can use the van a little bit in the summer at least. Yeah. Yeah, that's, the, and, um, that's the goal. The thought was that when we bought it, it was like a fun half done project where we can just, we got loads of time. We were going to drive to England over Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're thinking not to have it done by Christmas, but done enough to be able to use it and whatever. And by the summer, it would not have been a problem at all to have everything done that we were hoping. No. And now it just feels a bit overwhelming to think that we got all of this to do before it's done. Yeah, hopefully it'll be in a state where we can use it throughout the summer. Yeah, maybe. I think so. I think it'll be, it'll be, use, it'll be usable enough. Yeah, the van will be usable enough. It's more if I'm usable enough. Usable <laughs> enough. <laughs> we'll see. I think you will be in the summer. You'll yeah. be you'll be fighting fit and ready for adventure. Yeah. I think the goal for for us from here on out is to um, put out a video every week. So hopefully every weekend you'll get a new sort of part of the journey to uh, to follow along with. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and um, and come back next weekend. Uh, that's the goal. That's the goal. For as much as possible. We're thinking that if we can help anybody else that's going through this fight, then it's worth showing you guys this. Even though it's tough, there's always a positive side on life and you have to look at what the positives are and not get into your dark place because that's when it start getting bad. Of course, it's allowed to have bad days, but don't make it a bad journey. Somebody told us that don't forget that you're not cancer. Cancer is just something that happened to you. Yeah. And I thought that was a nice thing. Amy B from King In It. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> that was good words. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, it was a nice, nice way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks very much for watching this, um, and make sure you stick around and uh, follow along for the rest of the journey, week by week from now on. I think yeah. so. Um, you can see the whole chemo process and everything like that. It'll be interesting. Yeah. It's a shame that it's us that's uh, showing it to you, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's uh, it'll be worth it. Yep. So um, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you next weekend. Bye. Bye.